Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another Mortal Kombat video. Now in today's topic, I wanted to do something a little bit different, and actually compare two different characters in the series, I know I'm super original right, and see how one does compare to the other. Now as we all do know, with Shao Kahn now being somewhat dead in the new timeline, we've had someone else come and take over from where he's left off, being Kotal Khan. Now for this video, I won't be talking about who's stronger in terms of sheer power, because let's face it, that is really unfair, but I'll be talking about which has really been the better ruler. Now it is going to be slightly unfair as Kotal Khan has only had one game, but I will be using the Mortal Kombat X comics to kind of add more information and character upon him, since Shao Kahn is such a massive villain in the series, so it would be kind of unfair just to compare these small little things. But in saying that, this is me ultimately dictating which one is the better ruler, which one is the better Khan. Now first off, let's talk a bit about Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn has always been a familiar force. He's ruthless, cunning, and probably most terrifying of all, he's tactical. He's certainly been an individual in the universe that's been able to establish himself as someone that can only be deemed as the true bad villain. Shao Kahn's brutality and charisma has allowed him to take over numerous realms and put them under his thumb, but he always knew how to be smart if the odds weren't in his favour. The best two examples we actually have of this is back in the original timeline. You see, Shao Kahn had always suspected that Shang Tsung would turn against him. So he would create a clone to take his place if such a thing were to happen. And of course, as we all do know, that did happen. Now another instance of this happening is actually a long time back, and this was before he was the Khan of Outworld. You see, Shao Kahn used to work under the Dragon King Onaga. He became an advisor and student of the Dragon King. But it's around this time where Shao Kahn's first for power started to grow. Knowing that he couldn't take Onaga in one-on-one -on -one combat, he would poison the Dragon King and usurp him that way. And it's from this point onwards where he went on a tyrannical rampage across the realms, capturing many and merging it with his own, leaving many homes and realms in ruin as he burned many to the ground. But also saying that, Shao Kahn was a leader that did have some flaws. His overbearing cocky attitude would lead to his defeats on two different occasions, but the biggest downfall of the Khan was the fact that none of his allies truly liked him. They only followed his orders and what he really did through fear. Outside of this, Shao Kahn was deeply despised by many that worked for him, which I guess in many cases cases is why Shang Tsung actually turned against him in the first place, which I guess is the first big and massive rift between Kotal Khan and Shao Kahn. Upon Shao Kahn's defeat in the new rebooted timeline, Kotal was nominated by many individuals that worked under Shao Kahn to be his successor. Now it wasn't due to his overwhelming power or his desire for bloodlust, it was in fact the camaraderie and trust that they had with him. He was chosen to be Khan because he had his own morals and distinction of what was right and what was wrong. Kotal was chosen by Shao Kahn's allies to be his successor due to the attributes that he did have. So how he came to power was definitely very different to how Shao Kahn came into power. Really, he was chosen for the position instead of taking it for his own, which kind of shows the massive two different attributes between these two different Khan. Shao Kahn was a fear-mongering destroyer, whereas Kotal is more of a productive ruler. And what I mean by this is that when Shao Kahn was in rule of Outworld, he had more concern of taking over other realms than actually looking after his own. His only desire was to conquer, which in many ways I guess goes to show how simple-minded Shao Kahn is, but it's not like it was something he was unsuccessful at, merging the realm of Edenia and nearly even Earthrealm. He was extremely successful with conquering many homes and enslaving many individuals under him. But that is as far as it really goes. We never at any point see if Shao Kahn is concerned about his own realm. It seems like he's far too focused on conquering others to kind of reunite them all into becoming the one being. But that topic does deserves its own video, we'll go into the one being another time. So another contrasting side to what we see with Kotal is that on top of dealing with the Outworld Civil War with Melina, he's trying to rebuild Outworld into a better place, reforming and kind of creating an actual home for the Outworlders to live in. Now in saying that, it's not like Kotal Khan doesn't have a bad bone in his body, as during Kung Jin's chapter, we see that public execution is still a thing, so it's safe to presume that he does believe in the whole philosophy of an eye for an eye, if that entire eye was your neckline. Kotal is definitely a ruler that does care for his home, which is surprisingly something that Shao Kahn did lack, as I would say that Shao Kahn is definitely more of a conqueror than he is a ruler, allowing his underlings to take control of issues that he had no interest in. But now, which one is actually the better ruler? Well, that's actually something I can't really say. Kotal by far is definitely a better ruler of Outworld, but Shao is by far the better conqueror. It's like comparing apples to oranges. They do things in their own way, but are different, and it kind of goes to show the very two different 
directions they've decided to go in with these characters. Kotoa's heart wants to do what's best for his home. We see this during the end of MKX where he thinks he's been betrayed by the Earth Realmers, when in reality that's not the case at all. He's only going after them because he believes that they are a threat to his home. Shao Kahn does what he does because he loves conquering and destroying realm. The thrill and power he gains from conquering a realm is what really gets his blood going. That's what allows him to assert his dominance and essentially expand his home. He lives for battle, whereas Kotal lives to create a better tomorrow. So I can't really compare the two. They're doing things that are very different for what they believe is the benefit of Outworld. Now Shao Kahn's may be seen as a little bit more selfish, as well as Shao Kahn and he loves destroying stuff, Kotal's doing it to benefit his people. So it's very weird to say, it's very two different contrasting sides. So I'm gonna let you guys down in the comments below actually decide for yourselves. I'm very torn on this, because these two different Khans are taking the idea of what a Khan is in very different directions. One where it's a warlord, and one that's trying to create a better home. It's very different from what we've known of what a Khan actually is. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. But yeah, that more or less does wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you do enjoy this and have actually learned more. Also, you kind of see the differences between Kotal and Shao Khan, and how they're kind of redefining the whole Khan identity. It's very interesting and very different from what we've seen before. And I know some people aren't particularly happy with Kotal and the direct he's kind of been taken in, but if they were to do a Shao Kahn clone, it'd be very unfair for that character, because for one, everyone would then be saying that he's just another cheap version of Shao Kahn, and that the writers got lazy and just rehashed the same character again. So I'm quite happy to see them take a different direction and have it not be so cookie cutter. It just prevents rehashing the same formula again and again till it gets old. So it's nice to see something that's a bit new. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video, guys. I want to say again, thank you for all of the Mortal Kombat 11 support. I deeply, deeply do appreciate it, and it's been absolutely fantastic to see you guys interact with my stuff and give me some positive feedback as to what you guys want to see. So if you have any interesting suggestions for videos, please put them down in the comments below. I'm honestly really happy to talk about anything, as long as it's quite interesting and it feels like I'm adding something to the conversation. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video, guys. Now before it wraps up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So if you're giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. And if you want to go to extra step, we also have a Patreon set up, and a link for it will be down in the description below. Anyway guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care, and I'll see you all next time.